Welcome to Usability and Human Factors, Electronic Health Records and Usability. This is Lecture A. In this unit, we will apply principles of usability and design to critiquing EHR systems and to making recommendations for iterative improvement. By the end of this unit, students will be able to 1. Describe and define usability as it pertains to the EHR. 2. Explain the challenges of EHR design and usability in typical workflow. In 2010, three major organizations, the Association for Research on Healthcare and Quality, AHRQ, the National Research Council, NRC, and the Health Information Management Systems Society, HIMSS, published reports on usability. NRC was the first, and after two-year study in which experts traveled around the country looking at some of the institutions with the best healthcare IT, came to this conclusion, that while computing science has adequately met the needs of back-end systems, what is needed is better front-end development that provides cognitive support to clinicians. Usability is a critical part of the user experience. The other reports focused on usability also, pointing out its influence in errors, which in medicine can be fatal, user satisfaction and productivity. In 2014, certification criteria were revised to include safety-enhanced design. In 2015, the United States Department of Health and Human Services, in the final rule, published in the Federal Register on October 16, 2015, recommended following specific standards and guidelines for testing and evaluation methods published by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, and by the International Organization for Standardization. Users form their impression of software from their experience above all, Poor experiences can lead to profound dissatisfaction, including refusal to use the system, abuse, dangerous workarounds, and other serious consequences. For example, we have seen the results of poor usability affect the outcome of elections. In 2009, HIMSS published 10 aspects of usability, simplicity, naturalness, consistency, minimizing cognitive load, efficient interactions, forgiveness, feedback, and effective use of language, effective information presentation, and preservation of context. Current research by National Center for Cognitive Informatics and Decision Making in Healthcare, the NCCD, has found that a great user interface follows established human interface design principles that are based on the way users, doctors, nurses, patients, etc., think and work. There are 14 general design principles that can be applied to the development of EHRs, and they are an expansion and elaboration of Nielsen's 10 principles that are discussed in other units in this component. We will use these guidelines in the remainder of this unit. Let's look at some reasons why EHR usability is not yet optimal. Vendor contracts may forbid customers, even customers of the same EHR, to discuss their experiences. Publication of screenshots and other information may be forbidden by copyright. This hinders research. The AHRQ report found that many legacy systems currently in use are more than 10 years old, and implementation plans can take decades. Best practices have not been defined yet, though AHRQ and other associations are working on this. Expectations are unclear, communication limited, and many vendors do not do formal usability testing, or only do it to a limited extent. Because of the lack of formal standards and training, usability may be perceived to be overly subjective and therefore difficult to measure. As we will show later, this is not the case. However, 
The increased interest and focus on this problem means that there is increasing involvement of users in design. The AHRQ report on vendor practices found that vendors attempt to compete on usability, users demand better products, and plans for formal usability testing are increasing. Vendors also say they are amenable to changing design if given guidelines. Some users and researchers are discouraged at the extremely poor usability of some systems, which has led to errors, including fatal errors. Political and power struggles in implementations can ensue, as the introduction of technology can also change power relationships as well as radically alter workflow and work practices. Lack of appropriate clinician input at design has sometimes resulted in systems which are at best difficult to use and at worst dangerous. According to the AHRQ report on vendor practices below are some quotes. The field is competitive, so there is little sharing of best practices to the community. The industry should not look towards vendors to create these best practices. Other entities must step up and define them and let the industry adapt. Products are picked on the amount of things they do, not how well they do them. There are no standards most of the time, and when there are standards, there is no enforcement of them. The software industry has plenty of guidelines and good best practices, but in HIT, there are none. A study published in 2015 by Rathwani and colleagues found that there was a lack of adherence to ONC certification requirements. For example, only 22% of the vendor reports had used at least 15 participants with clinical backgrounds for usability tests. Rathwani and colleagues stated, the lack of adherence to usability testing may be a major factor contributing to the poor usability experienced by clinicians. Enforcement of existing standards, specific usability guidelines, and greater scrutiny of vendor UCD processes may be necessary to achieve the functional and safety goals for the next generation of EHRs. Let's look at some examples of egregious usability problems prepared by Scott Silverstein, an informatician who had to prepare mock screenshots based on real systems because of copyright restrictions. His website contains more examples. Some basic examples are the placement of related data far apart, such as one real system, which required the user find the different components of blood pressure, systolic and diastolic, four screens apart. Another example is diagnosis lists, which make rare diagnoses more easily clickable than common ones. Take a look at this mock screenshot. What do you see that is suboptimal or could lead to error? Instead of just programming a highlight for information that should be alerted, the system states there are no indicator flags. The result section says that the result is negative, and the result is final. Most clinicians who are busy would likely stop reading here. Then, there is an addendum saying that the culture is actually positive for MRSA, a dangerous infection that often spreads in hospitals. This sort of bad design has several consequences. It forces clinicians to search for indications of normalcy or danger. It presents a disparity from the lab system, which normally flags abnormal results. This can lead to miscommunication between personnel. The case is a real case in which the patient was not treated for a dangerous infection for 24 hours. The system is CCHIT certified despite the bad design. This example also shows one of the changes from paper to computer. In a paper system, the erroneous first test could have been crossed out, preventing the mistake. This slide shows an alphabetized problem list from a real system. This does not meet the needs of clinicians who would want to see the problems in order of severity or importance. 
The list is created by the system automatically, and the clinician does not have the ability to edit or delete entries. The entries can be incorrect because many people put information into the system and may make selections for inconvenience, such as the nurse who entered the atrial fibrillation diagnosis to speed up the order fulfillment. Unbelievably, the wrong entry can only be removed by the vendor. Thus, the multiple diabetes diagnoses, only one of which is accurate. Lack of controlled terminology makes term management difficult. The list also includes useless information such as the medication use long term item. This screen shows excessive density, complexity, lack of organization or marking that could make it easier to read, extraneous information and general clutter. This is a grid which the user must scroll to be able to see some information. However, when the user scrolls, the row and column headers that tell what information belonged to each column disappears. Thus, the user must keep track either mentally or, more likely, by placing fingers on the screen. Otherwise, it would be easy to lose track of columns or misread information, potentially causing errors. This screen has excessive repetitious information that is not needed and is distracting, such as including the units in every cell instead of in the header rows. There is a lack of focus and clarity. Lab panel components are scattered. This concludes Lecture A of Usability in Human Factors, Electronic Health Records, and Usability. In this unit, we examined vendor practice reports by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. This provided key rules and roles for vendors. In addition, this lecture provided examples on how wrong data can be input into EHR systems error. In the next lecture, we will continue by discussing usability concepts.